welcome to This Day. Today is Tuesday and it's May 26th and we hope you had a fabulous Memorial Day weekend. And before we tell you who's on our show today, I did find a brain teaser for today. So the first one of the week is, what are the next three letters in the following sequence? J F M A M J J A dot dot dot. So what are the last three letters in this sequence? J F M A M J J A and then what's after that? So when we come uh, back later in the show, we will have that answer for you. All right, on our show today, we have amazing hearing. And we're hearing from Anne Mundell Noel, and she's just got all sorts of great information for you. They are open, and she's got some great uh, things that you can use for hearing in uh, all parts of your house. So we'll go ahead and uh, have some interesting information from her. All right, then we have a meeting today. It's the United Finance Committee meeting, and that will be at 1.30 p.m., and if you would like to uh, watch that meeting, it is a virtual meeting, and you can go to lagunawoodsvillage.com forward slash meetings, and you can email, and you can phone call in as well, and we can share that information how to later. All right, let's go ahead and go to our resources, as we always have in the past, giving you some general information. CDC.government is where you can get all of your information about COVID-19. OCHealthInfo.com is where you can get the numbers per city, per age, and a variety of other demographics. You can go to usa.gov forward slash coronavirus, which is where you can watch uh, kind of step by step what the governor is doing on reopening California. Then you can also go to our website, which is lagunawoodsvillagealerts.com. You can email us if you have any additional questions, info at lagunawoodsvillage.com. Or of course, you could always go to our recorded hotline at 268-2019. But let's go ahead and take a look at our weather. Our weather is looking very lovely after this fog burns off. We've got today where we're gonna be 83, 62, a little bit of clouds this morning and then some sun. And then it's looking pleasant Wednesday, uh, 82, 62. Thursday, sunny, 80 and 60. And then Friday, we're gonna have some cooler temperatures, a little more clouding, 75, 59. And then it's going to be very nice over the weekend, 77, 58. Let's take a look at our morning sunrise which is going which was 544 and then our sunset is going to be at 753 and these beautiful uh, plants are provided by Diane Strobel. Diane thank you so much these are awesome these must be huge in person these looks like an aloe vera plant if you have some great photos of around town please send them to Laguna Woods Village TV at gmail.com. All right, when we come back, we will have amazing hearing. Stay tuned. I'm Ann Mundell Noel, audiologist and owner of Amazing Hearing. As an audiologist, I have the education and expertise to assess, diagnose, and treat hearing loss. Hearing aids are only one part of the treatment process. The way we have been taught to fit, counsel, and use hearing therapy is what makes us different. Amazing Hearing, audiologists with the education, expertise, and empathy to change how you hear. Welcome back. With me today via Zoom is Ann Mundell from Amazing Hearing. Hi, Ann. How are you? Hi, Lisa. How are you? Good, good. I, I know we we're still going to be doing Zooms probably for at least another month at this point, but I understand you're open, you're helping your clients or anybody that might have some questions. But before you know, we get into that, let's talk a little bit about, you know, things have changed a lot over the last eight weeks. We've all been staying home. We have to wear masks and there's a whole lot of things. So let's let's first start with you know some of the things that you've had to do uh, to change to make it available for your uh, client. Thank you. Yeah, it has been a big change, but we um, have adapted. We have been monitoring the CDC guidelines, but also our academy guidelines of how we're going to do patient care. So some of the things that we've done over the last 
eight weeks and we're continuing to do is we are doing curbside service. So for those patients that don't feel comfortable coming out of their car or they feel compromised with their health, we have the masks, we have sanitized our hands and our products and we can come out to you. I can't do wax removal from your car, but I have been able to change um, tips and filters on hearing aids. And um, we are now also doing something called telehealth. So there's certain hearing aids that I can now program right from the computer, as long as a patient has this kind of a setup where they have visual acuity of being able to see me and talk to me. Mm -hmm. There's only a couple brands, um, or I should say a couple models within each brand that allow for this. And unfortunately, it's more of the latest technology that allows you to do it, but it is available. So I would say definitely for patients who feel like they still can't go out, call mm -hmm. us because we can possibly help you. Um, we can also send a little device in the mail for people who wear Widex hearing aids and they can have them adjusted in their home. So that's one thing. The bigger thing that we have done here is that we have changed the setup of our office. So we now have a dedicated room for a patient once they come in the door that they can go into. We can take their temperature. We have the thermometers now to do the forehead temperatures if this becomes mandatory. So right. we're not doing it right now, but we're preparing for CDC guidelines to change if it goes to that extreme. Um, the other thing that we're doing with that room is that when patients come into the office and they sign in, they go into that room as a waiting room and it allows them to kind of decompress, sanitize their hands and get ready for us. And then when they come out of the room, they're doing the same thing, kind of finishing things there, not in the general lobby. So we've had to make some modifications in the office, but I think it's gonna flow much better and it makes the patients feel more secure. So obviously right now I don't have my little mask on, but we do have our masks here and we do have them for patients that need them and didn't bring them. That's good, and and I know it, it is huge. It's a huge adaptation, and we've all had to do it. And I'm really glad that you're able to do those things and and open back up. Uh, you know, in the meantime. Mm -hmm. So let me let me ask you this. You said something about the temperatures. So you're running the temperature thing along the forehead. Do having having your um, hearing aids on or in does it affect the temperature? Good question. And the short answer is yes. Wow. So for just like the mask. So if you have your mask over your face and you go into an establishment and they are going to take your temperature, mm -hmm. they will ask you to take off your jacket or your mask for about five minutes. I've done this a couple of times when I've gone, had to go over to the towers to do some um, house calls and had to sit and wait for 10 minutes. And he's like, okay, your temperature's going down. And I'm like, it's just because I'm running quick. But yeah. it's the same thing with the hearing aids. So if you have the kind of hearing aid like this that has kind of a thicker earpiece, mm -hmm. it's actually plugging up the hole of your head. And so the heat is not being released. And so if the, what the American Academy of Audiology guidelines are saying through a recent study is if you even pull the hearing aids out of your ears for two to three minutes, let the heat of your body escape, then when you do the temperature, it will be a more accurate reading. So you don't want to get nervous to say, I didn't pass, I can't come into my doctor or whatever. No, just take your hearing aids out of your ears for a few minutes, rest, relax, and then have them take your temperature and you'll get a much more accurate reading. That's, that's interesting. I, I'd never even heard of that before, but I guess, is that something that people would know if they have hearing aids? I don't think so, because as an audiologist, I didn't even know it. I think they just did these studies as this COVID thing is happening as to say, okay, pre proactively, what can we do? I mean, the other part of that is that we don't realize, I mean, as audiologists, I do, but the general public is starting to get an idea of what it feels like to have a mild high frequency hearing loss. Because as soon as you put this mask on, you are reducing the clarity of sound by about 10 to 12 decibels. Wow. And if we get a little lesson in physics, 
decibels means every 10 decibels is a doubling of sound. So if I take away 10 to 12 decibels, I'm taking away a lot of clarity sounds, soft sounds like S, F, S, H, T, H. And it's not S, but it's S, sh, huh. right? The softer sounds. And that's why it sounds so muffled when you have your mask on. Yeah, you know, and, and we've been wearing our masks at our offices and there's, we're in a, we're a reduced crew over here, but nonetheless, mm -hmm. when they're talking, I'm constantly going, what, what? And, it, and, and it's not because I can't hear, it's exactly what you're saying. So that's really interesting and actually quite unfortunate because if we are going to be in a room with people and we're going to be wearing masks, it's going to be hard to hear. Right. The other thing that people don't understand is that with hearing aid microphones, the microphone on a hearing aid is made to have conversation about six feet apart. That's where you get your greatest impact. And here we are saying with social distancing, you need to stay six feet or further apart. And it's like for our hearing compromised patients, they're like, ah, this is like total chaos. And so then that also leads into the isolation, right? That people have really been experiencing isolation and a lack of communication. And it, if anything, I hope gives a little empathy to those people who have to deal with this on an ongoing basis, mm -hmm. that maybe we would appreciate more when they say, I hear you, but I don't understand, or could you come a little bit closer? It's because of those factors of communication that are being deprived, for sure. Exactly. Uh, you know, let's talk about the masks because the masks themselves are, you know, they're cumbersome, but they're also on our ears a lot. Mm. And, you know, you take off your mask, you might, your hearing aid might fly mm. off. What are, what are some things people can do? Well, thanks for asking because it is between the glasses, the hearing aids and the mask, there's a lot going on back there. And that's one thing that really patients want to be aware of is that when they remove the mask is that they don't take the hearing aid with it. Um, we do have some of these in the office. And what this is, is it's a little uh, 3D kind of grabber. Um, my brother made them from Michigan and he made them for a hospital in Michigan. And I'm like, hey, bro, I could use those for my patients. <laughs> so we have a limited supply. I have about 50 of them right now. We're trying to get more. But basically the way that this works is that you hook the mask on and then when you put it behind your head, you can then monitor the length of what you want. But it puts the pressure on the back of your head rather than behind your ear. Oh, so the nice. advantage of that is it takes the pressure off of the ear, it's putting it on the back of your head, and it's so much more comfortable. And that's what a lot of the nurses and doctor staff have been doing across the country is getting those clips made. So this was just made from a 3D printer. The um, design is on there. So if any of our uh, residents have a 3D printer, you could be making them for other people. They're very inexpensive to mm -hmm. make, um, but we have about 50 of them here in our office. Okay. So if you are a patient of ours, when you come in, you can get one. If you're not a patient of ours and you would like one, we are asking for a $2 donation because we have a nonprofit that we put water wells into Uganda. And so that's where the money will go. It's not going to oh, us. That's great. Uganda. You know, let's, let's talk a little bit about, you know, quickly about your, your charity. Uh, you also, you also collect plastic bottles and aluminum too, right? We do. So we have patients who bring in our plastic bottles and aluminum cans as long as they have that California CRV. So we're not taking anything, not milk containers, not laundry products, only California CRV. Okay. But over the last 10 years, we have put in eight water wells in Uganda just from that, pro that project. So it's a passion of mine. I have done it for the last 10 years, but I love when my patients come in and they bring their bags of plastic bottles and cans because you're making a difference in the world. So any resident, now that we don't have recycling centers, if you would love to bring us your plastic bottles and aluminum cans, you can. We are in the Trader Joe's shopping center and the big red letters say, hearing you could just drop them off in the door and we would really really appreciate it that that's great that's really great and uh you know the fact that your brother made those little plastic things is amazing is he in that kind of business 
No, he's retired, but he's <laughs> bored. <laughs> so he has a 3D printer. So that's why I'm saying he, it's very inexpensive to make yeah. these. But I think some of our residents who are engineers in the area probably have a 3D printer and you can get that design and print them off and share them. Because unfortunately, I think we might have masks around for a while. Yeah. And again, for those that have hearing loss, it is like a double whammy. So, you know, as much as you can enunciate through your mask, but, per, you know, prayerfully having a little bit more empathy to those people who have to deal with this even after COVID is over. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, those are awesome. Good, good job on the brother. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So a uh, couple other couple of other things. You have a new addition and you've got some new stuff going on in the office. So tell me about that. Yeah, during this COVID crisis, we have been blessed. We have a new audiologist who's going to be joining us June 1st. Her name is Dr. Laura Hunt, and she graduated from Ball State University with her AUD. So she's a doctor of audiology and only been out of school for two years, but has worked in a busy ENT office back in Indiana. Her husband um, got a job transfer out here, which is why they were here, and she just fell into our lap, and we are so excited because she brings fresh ideas, but basically she's going to complement what I do. We were both trained in a very similar style, and I think our patients are going to love her. She's just a good down-home girl. And um, with that, so she'll be joining us June 1st. And with that, we are starting to have more displays in the office, working displays. So I'm going to just grab this little guy here. This is a central alerting system. And I don't have them plugged into the wall, but it's an alarm clock that flashes. It's very loud. It can also have a bed shaker. So you could put it oh. under your pillow and it oh. could shake you awake. Okay. But you can attach a lot of different devices to it. You can attach the doorbell ringer. You could have your cell phone when it goes off. It could flash it. Mm -hmm. um, we can have a light flash, like a lamp. So you can see it's starting to flash a little bit yeah, as I'm doing yeah. this. Um, but we will have more of these kinds of things on display. I think the biggest thing that people have found is that they might need this little guy, which is a TV amplifier. So what happens is you, he's by Bluetooth. So okay. the base would plug in to your uh -huh. TV and okay. he sits on top. Oh, so gotcha. people call it like a little iron, but basically this is a Bluetooth and you could mute the volume of your TV or turn it down really low and then turn this on and uh -huh. you can carry this around with you so that you're not disturbing your neighbors. So oh. when you have neighbors who you hear the TV blaring loud, yeah, yeah. this is a $150 solution okay. that has been amazing. And we've sold a lot of these during this COVID time. Oh, that's great. I guess the difference that sometimes people buy that, that big giant speaker that goes down below and that's supposed to help too, but you cannot move that. You can only have it, you know, right there. But that's also a sound bar. So what people don't realize with TVs is the sound, the TVs are made today for visual, right? We have this beautiful yeah. screen, it's really thin, but the sound quality of the TV itself is very poor because the sound is either going down, out the sides or out the back. It doesn't come out the front anymore like in the old days when we had the woofer on the front and the subwoofer and it went towards you. So this guy brings the sound right to you. He's right next to your ear if you wanted him to be, oh. rather than that sound bar is just enhancing the sound all over. Got it. Well, thanks for that clarification because I really, yeah. when you were talking about that little thing, I wasn't sure what the difference was. So that's perfect. Well, awesome. Well, you guys are doing a great job. I'm, I'm, you're now, are you open for people to walk in at this time? We are. So we are having them when they come in you know, have their, their mask on and sanitizing their hands, but we are full service and we are back in swing. So we are very excited to help the Laguna Woods community. Love it. Well, thank you. That's perfect. I appreciate it. And thank you for taking the time and you stay healthy. You too. Thank you, Lisa. And we'll be right back after this. Today, we are marking the beginning of a new era as City of Hope opens its first location right here in Newport Beach. 
We have 500 scientists and doctors who have dedicated their lives to beating cancer. So they use that intellectual capital to try to make sure every patient gets the best care possible that's known to science. Welcome back. Now that was a long segment, but such good information. So we really want to thank Anne for that. All right, let's go ahead and give you the answer to our brain teaser. But first I'll read the question again. What are the next three letters in the following sequence? J F M A M J J A. Do you think you have it? The answer is S-O-N. It is the sequence in the first letter of the month of the year. September, October, and November are the next in the sequence. So obviously January, May, and so on and so forth. So, I mean January, February. So there you go. You've got uh, that answer, and hopefully you were able to get that one this time. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and give you some pickleball and paddle tennis information. As you know, tomorrow they will be open. So super excited. All right, so they will have special restrictions. Reservations will be taken, um, actually starting today, and uh, they will have conditions, and you'll need to follow new procedures that allow for limited recreational access, and they will comply with the federal, state, and county guidance, as well as guidance from the USA Pickleball Association and the American Platform Tennis Association. So for pickleball, the hours are from 7 a.m. to noon, and that's Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. You can make the required reservation one day in advance during the weekdays from 1 to 2 at 949-268-2274. One reservation can be scheduled per call. Now, the court time is scheduled in 45-minute increments, and reservation times are 7 to 745, 8 to 845, 9 to 9.45, 10 to 10.45, and 11 to 11.45. All right, now let's go on to the paddle tennis hours are from 7 a.m. to noon, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Now, you can make required reservations also one day in advance, and that is be from 1 to 2 p.m. at 949-268-2274. And again, one reservation can be scheduled per call. Court time is scheduled in one and, a half, one and a half hour increments. And those can be, you know, 7 to 8.30, 8.45 to 10.15, and 10.30 to noon. So I'm sure that will be very busy, so you might want to get your phone, you know, on speed dial <laughs> right as the time opens up today at uh, 1 o'clock, I believe. So there you go. Um, just also to give you the information on gate 16, and the driving range are open, yay! So now that you have the driving range open, that will be um, from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. And then of course, you can always look for your Village News e-blast that will be arriving in your email. I think it may have come out yesterday uh, or today. And you can get all of the information that we've pretty much told you here uh, just now. All right, let's uh, go ahead and also look at the Great Plates program. Now we mentioned this. Uh, last week that on April 24th, 2020, Governor Gavin Newsom announced the launch of the first in the nation Great Plates Delivered program. Now this is a meal service, very similar to, you know, Meals on Wheels, so, but it's really open to anyone who really needs it. So it delivers, it has two purposes. It helps seniors and other adults at high risk from COVID-19 to stay home and stay healthy by delivering three nutritious meals a day. And it provides essential economic stimulus to local businesses struggling to stay afloat during the COVID-19 crisis. Now, this is still going on. And even though some restaurants are open, some of them still are not open for sit-down, but you can do takeout. Now, the three ways to register to participate in the Great Plates program is to register at covid19.ca.gov. You could go to our website, which is lagunawoodsvillage.com or lagunawoodsvillagealerts.com, 
or you could call Social Services at 597-4267. And I know it's only Tuesday, but we're gonna go ahead and give you a sneak peek of what our Friday movie is. And the Friday movie is Woman in Here she Gold. Is my aunt. That's quite a painting. She was taken off the walls of our home by the Nazis. Since then, she's been hanging in Vienna. And now you'd like to be reunited. And then there's justice. I never thought I'd come back. Welcome to Vienna. They're going to put as many obstacles in your way as possible. She is the Mona Lisa of Austria. We will fight you till the end for something we believe is ours. They destroyed my family, and they forced me to abandon the people and the places that I loved. Here to file a lawsuit. We're taking the Austrian government to court. Have a nice day. All along, you have thwarted me and closed the doors in my face. This is a case of one woman wanting justice. That looks like a really good movie. So, you know, we're trying to bring you as many good movies as we can on Mondays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at our weather. It's looking absolutely beautiful this week. We will have some clouds in the morning on some of the days, but uh, that's really just fog that's burning off. I don't know if you were outside yesterday, but it was an absolutely gorgeous day. Uh, really nice outside, so hopefully you were able to take advantage of that. So today our temperatures, we are going to have the clouds in the morning, as I mentioned, but sunshine this afternoon with 83, 62. We've got Wednesday, which is pleasant with some sun, 82, 62. Thursday's looking very nice with 80, 60. And then we're going to cool down a little bit on Friday, mostly sunny with cooler temperatures, 75, 59. And then we're going to go back up again on Saturday, really nice again, 77, 58. Now, um, you can travel, as you know, you can go down to some of the beaches, which are gonna look pretty nice uh, over the next uh, few days. It will have some fog. And I think what I'll start doing, since we can kind of go places, is start giving you some around town temperatures, maybe the beaches and also out inland in Palm Springs. Palm Springs is not open quite yet, but I did hear that sometime in late June, they are going to be open, so we'll keep you up to date on that. Um, in any case, you can always watch our rebroadcast today at 1230 and then again at 5 and catch us again tomorrow. And don't forget the United Finance Committee meeting is at 130. Have a great day in the village. We'll see you again here tomorrow and stay healthy. Communities are starting to feel the financial impact of COVID-19, commonly called coronavirus. But we want you to know that there is help. We have disability insurance for workers who are ill or medically quarantined due to COVID-19. Paid family leave is available for those caring for an ill or medically quarantined family member and unemployment insurance for reduced hours or lost work. We're all in this together. For information on how to stay healthy, visit covid19.ca.gov.